Oh my gosh, it's running! years of this engine not running it's finally running so it's been idling for i would say about 10 minutes um it turned off because I called one of my friends and they, he told me, he suggested that I connected all of the mass floor air stuff like this, like the air box and all that and the connection. Um, so as you know, it was running. You, you saw it. It's still steaming because I have the cap halfway open. Uh, that's the reason why it's steaming. It's not because of any other thing. I hope not. It's been a long time. Struggles. I'm telling you, I got this car about 20, uh, 2021 of August sometime there. It was a struggle. You know, I'm not a mechanic is what I want to say. I, I'm just a regular guy. I'm like one of you guys that watch a YouTube video. I am no mechanic whatsoever. I couldn't even change a tire, right? Or let alone do an oil change. I just couldn't. And little as little time went on, this car forced me to learn. It forced me to do things that I'm not comfortable with. You know, I, getting my hands dirty with oil and all this other BS, dealing with mud and water and rain and... This car has just been sitting there for almost, I wouldn't say a year, but I don't know how many months. We're now in, right now, the time that I'm recording this video, it is May 1st. So it is, it took a while, struggles, you know, trying to learn about this car, doing the things. I have, you know, I, there's things that I should have done correctly, but, you know, it's, it was just the fact that what helped a lot, I would say, is the engine. The engine itself was probably one of the biggest things that helped me along the way because the engine is not that terrible. I know that there's other projects that people have tackled that are much more extreme, much more harder. You know, it's just there. It's just difficult, right? You know, people rebuilding engines completely. But me, this is my perspective and my point of view that I'm showing you or that I'm trying to do my best to show you. It's running. You know, it is is an experience that I've learned, you know, things that I won't forget forever, you know, things and memories that this car has forced me to do and learn. And it's, you know, it's been a journey. And, you know, I'm glad that now we're at this point that it runs. I'm so happy, so happy that it's running. Now, will it start again? I don't know. But at least I know I was able to run it. I can say I bought a Project MR2 did things and you know the fuel the fuel pump clean the fuel tank no experience whatsoever researching learning how to be patient when you want to be impatient you know this car is a big trademark to me i'm not gonna lie to you last night yesterday last night i saw two mclarens at a uh, chick-fil-a in dover delaware um you know the closest that i have ever been to an exotic car I had never driven an exotic car. I've been driving boring cars, Corollas, Honda Civics. The only most powerful thing I've ever driven was a Durango because of the V8. 
a V6 Sonoma, another V8, but never a sports car. Um, besides my friend's uh, Infiniti G37 with the 3.7 V6, you know. But, you know, I've never truly owned one, never less even, not even a stick shift, bro. Like, I, this has been a journey. And uh, let's see if we get disappointed again. So this is after I plugged in all that stuff. It has to relearn itself. I guess that's what it's trying to do. I don't know. But, you know, whatever it's trying to do, it has to learn. So... As you can already tell what it is, I think this is what is causing the MR2 not to run properly. Um, and, I'll ex and I'll show you why. Uh, yeah, not, not the cleanest, I'll tell you that. And, mm. But what matters is that it works. The newer cars, you know, they have a map sensor and this is an air flow meter. It's an old thing where it has a little sensor in there and there's a door, which is a flap. And it should open this way. It opens like this. It's like a, it makes like this type of L shape. So when you push it from there, it's supposed to open like this, etc. Right? This is supposed to allow the ECU to get an accurate, an accurate, right? Quote unquote, accurate reading on how much air it needs. Well, here's a problem with mine. It doesn't move. It doesn't move at all. It doesn't open. Look, I push my finger. Look, it opens. It's supposed to open like that. And mine doesn't open. It doesn't doesn't flap at all. See that? So you see the movement? That mine, the other one doesn't even do that. So that this is bad. I, can this be repaired? I think so. Uh, you're supposed to take off the silicone right here, pull off the plastic piece, and you should see the electronics. I didn't try to do that. And the other thing, you should never ever ever never ever never ever take off the screws it's a common sense thing right see those two screws next to the plug you're not supposed to pull out that screw because if you pull it off you just messed up the motherboard because supposedly on the other end of these screws is soldered to whatever electronic that's in there and well you potentially mess it up and i did unscrew one of these I unscrewed this one, not knowing, because I'm an idiot. This cost $270. Cost me $250 used, and it's an old used thing. I know, I, I don't know a way to bypass this system. I don't know, besides doing an ECU standalone, which means you have to program a computer for your MR2, which is expensive, or you do a Gen 3 swap, where it is you take the old ECU, Put in a Gen 3 ECU, and then you have to change some sensors, uh, injectors, and I don't know what other BS you got to deal with. And it may, may not run right either. I don't know. So this is the part number if you need to know. 2225074220. So it is in there. And we have it plugged in, so we'll test it out. We'll, we'll run it and see what happens. Hesitate, but then again, there's probably a vacuum leak somewhere. There's like the electric pump that's here. That it's oh snap, it's starting to work. So that's my thing is. Not the best connected. Another thing, I wonder if my alternator even works. Because it's running on its own. And I wonder if I unplug this. Oh. Okay, so the alternator does work.
fog lights work. I'm happy that this is what it's allowing it to run now. As before, we had many failed attempts and I had to educate myself on certain things, but it is running. You hear it, it's running. Now, I just gotta be weary of all the little things. Now, here comes the maintenance part where we gotta do all the uh, vacuum lines and all this, this, especially this right here. Um, it's starting to heat up now. So it's starting to run better now. So I'm, I'm happy. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna be watching for all the other stuff, making sure this doesn't overheat. Making sure it just gets through its heating cycles and gets used to turning on and off and all that. And well, I'm going to be cleaning that sensor anyway. Right now, I just wanted to test it and that is the sensor that was faulty. So, the MR2 is running. I am so stoked, guys. I'm so happy. The Project MR2, we're here now. You'll be seeing this video a lot later because of the fact that I'm so behind on the videos that I've been recording and dealing with all of this and the learning process that I'm going through. And the real, real thing now begins. I'm so happy, guys. I'm so excited. I'm. I can't believe we're finally having an MR2 running. From when this thing came parked, it's now running. So I'm trying to I'm trying to clean this. Uh, try to take out all the grum and dirt that's in there. Um, this is just an adapter for cold air intake, which I have. So it just spins and spins. I mean, if you look at it, it just it just spins and spins, and it doesn't come out. Maybe it'll start coming out. Uh, and the reason I want to take it out is so that I can mount it to the OEM airbox just because I have a brand new filter. I mean, I have, I bought a brand new one and why not? Come on now, you spend money and you want to use the tools. And I mean, I bought a brand new air filter and it's going to be useless because of the, of the strip. Well, I don't know if it's stripped, but you know, I'm going to see if I can even get that out. If not, then I have a spare cold air intake. Um, it's clean on the inside. The outside is dirty as hell, but I guess it'll work for the meantime. I so I suspect we have some sort of vacuum line, um, which I, I knew from the beginning, I would or I suspected. So my first suspicion is either this one here, that line there, that one I just now replaced, this one right here. This comes right off, I don't know from where, but um, that one definitely needed a replacement. So I, I just replaced that one just now. I definitely know I have a leak there somewhere. Um, for sure. I know I definitely do have a leak there. So we're gonna test it with carb cleaner We're gonna spray a little bit on the um, on the intake sides and stuff like that and see if it revs up Then we have a leak uh, First spot I'll test is right over there and then proceed here and here while I'm trying to Keep it throttling because this thing turns off. It doesn't like it. It's hot now But it doesn't like you know, it, it, it doesn't stays on So after I change that hose right here, it sounds a lot better. I hope I'm not turning my luck around. Yep. What have we learned today? Well, I one of the hoses has been taken care of. So at least I know that this thing is now secured now we have an issue where it just won't maintain so i don't know oh and this is hot this gets hot right there I, which explains because it has fins and it's it's crazy hot there's this connector right there as well i don't i don't know if that's liquid or whatever the heck that is or i don't know what type of sensor that is but it is definitely wet out and that's hot but yeah we're not going to be able to drive it today unfortunately the only the other issue too is that my intercooler fan is not kicking on i don't know why but I feel like that has something to do with it too. I feel like maybe my intercooler is not good. Now I have a buzzing noise. There's a buzzing noise. Like I said, it's on a cold air intake because of the fact that I can't even take off the screw. I'd rather it be on a regular stock air box, but that's not gonna happen.
Like I say, it turns on fine. But it's just a leak somewhere. So here it is, like I said, the, the battery's all buttoned up. It's all tightened down. Like I said, before it wasn't, it was just sitting on there and you know. But now it, the battery's good, it's new because I bought it last year. Uh, so it, it starts up fine, it starts up without any assistance. Oh, and I don't know why I did that, I forgot to tell you, but I have my bleeder hose. I believe that's three eighths. You're supposed to plug it into this thing right there and you just turn that knob just give it like three turns or something like that and then you should start seeing liquid coming out and same with this thing right here and you just prop it up somewhere high enough just the idea is to have it up higher than the engine or something like that so that way you can start bleeding out the system like i said i'll end off the video by starting it up again because you know that's a flex i guess if you can even call that a flex but uh just to show you And that's how she turns on. Automatic sh shut off switch.